Hello, this is Robert Carter, uh, Sydney District Technology Coach, uh, coming to you for some Tinker uh, tutorials. Uh, this one, I'm going to show you how to set up a classroom. Um, you're going to start with www.tinker.com. Go ahead and hit sign in. We're going to sign in as a teacher. And for our domain, we're always going to sign in with Google. Put a password in there. Now, your screen won't nearly be as populated as mine. Um, I am coming to you from an admin account. Um, <clears throat> but in any certain sense, um, your first step is going to be add class at the top of the screen. Now, if you were in grades 3 through 8, as Tinker is a K-8 platform, my best suggestion for getting a Tinker classroom up and started is to link an existing Google Classroom. This will... Um, completely import the students, and it'll make your life a lot easier. Students will sign in with their uh, sign in with their Google accounts by just simply um, hitting sign in with Google, as you saw with me. Um, in this case, I'm going to skip this. Um, this is your best option, but I'm going to go into just creating a uh, Tinker classroom itself. So in this way, I'm going to give it a name: Test One, Two, Three. Then I'm going to establish a grade level. Let's go ahead and go with first grade. Now, as you see, there are some tutorials at the bottom, but to be honest with you, just stick with what I'm showing you. It's going to be a lot simpler and much more to the point. Go ahead and hit Create Classroom. The first thing it's going to ask you to do is add students. Now, you can add students at any time. Um, most situations, you're going to be, as I said, adding through Google Classroom. Um, if you are in grades 5 through 8 or even 4 through 8, there's a class code up here that students can join um, through Tinker. I will be making a separate video for your students on that. Um, but in terms of setup and getting your classroom up and running, the really big area is going to be your lessons. Now, the classroom does not start with an assigned course, so we're going to go ahead and add that. You can also add lessons that are STEM-based as well, too. So for those of you looking to try to find time, especially in the elementary ranks, to get your social studies, your science, and stuff like that in, uh, Tinker is a nice cross-curricular tool. Uh, we're going to go ahead and hit Add Course. And I'm going to grab Programming 1A. Now, if you know that your kids have had exposure to this in the past, um, try to speak to the grade level team of uh, the previous year and see where the kids left off. Um, there is no harm in them repeating puzzles. This is about immersion in the journey, not necessarily the destination. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Assign. Now, as you see, 12 new lessons were added, zero duplicates. So I'm going to hit OK. So now I have my assigned area, and I'm going to go in and take a look at the courses that are on here. Now, the first thing I have to show you is it automatically puts all 12 on here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and click on these little three dots here, and I'm going to start on assigning things. Um, there is a reason I do that. Students have a propensity to jump around, to play around. Um, obviously, this is game-based. Uh, but as these lessons and the skills that they're trying to get your students to understand are very scaffolded in what, the, what they do, um, it's important for them to stay on track in a numerical order. So I typically only give them a couple of lessons at a time. Um, you will find your unassigned lessons in here and can simply click on the three buttons and assign them in numerical order as your kids tend to uh, proceed through the curriculum. Um, let's look a little quick at, at one of the lesson plans. One of the nice things about Tinker is you can click on any of these green dots and you can see that particular puzzle from the student point of view. If you scroll down, you've got the actual lesson plan. Yes, it will take them 75 plus minutes to get through the section. It talks about the new code blocks that are introduced, vocabulary words, the objectives, um, and basically what you're going to need to get all of these kids up and running, including start and suggested warm-ups for the kids. Um, as you see, you're going to have all these breakdowns, but as you go down, you're going to see standards that come with this lesson, and you're going to see answer keys for the lessons that, or the puzzles that tend to give kids the biggest trouble. Um, these answer keys are not all inclusive. They may not include everything, but I find for the ones that most kids and most adults need help with, um, what you need is here. Um, going back out to my classroom, 
I will go through some future um, videos that will address some of these other areas, but this one is going to stay mostly restricted to just getting a classroom started up. I hope this helps. Have a great day.